This video is going to focus on ions and ionic bonding. Uh, so first of all, uh, identifying what ions actually are. So ions are either atoms of particular elements or entire molecules which have somehow gained an overall charge, be it either a positive or negative charge. Now the only way that can happen is that there has been a transfer of electrons to or away from that atom of an element or that molecule giving that molecule now an overall positive or negative charge because there's an imbalance of the number of remaining protons and electrons present. There could be more or less electrons than there are now protons and that gives that overall particle or that overall molecule a positive or negative charge. So the first thing you might be asked to do is to describe how ions actually form. When you're asked to describe how ions form, for example, describe how sodium and chlorine atoms become ions in a chemical reaction, that is asking you about the transfer of electrons and to explain exactly how many electrons have been transferred, transferred from one atom to the other. So here's a good example. Sodium and chlorine, I've written down their symbols in the periodic table. We've got the mass number, or the relative atomic mass above, and below we've got the atomic number, and that's the one we're going to focus on because the atomic number is helping us work out the number of electrons in different shells because, by definition, an atom is electronically neutral and therefore it has an equal number of protons and electrons and the, the bottom number, the atomic number, tells us the number of protons. So therefore, by definition, since it's an atom, I also know the number of electrons is also 11 and 17 for these two elements. I could then consider their electron configuration, remembering that these electrons are arranged in any levels called shells, and the arrangement is 2, 8, 8, 2. And so 11 electrons arranged 2, 8, leaving me with one left in the outer shell for sodium. So sodium's electron configuration is 2, 8, 1. Chlorine's electron configuration is 2, 8, 7. So now I can see that uh, in terms of what will be the easiest thing to occur energetically in terms of a transfer, the sodium only has one electron to lose, and the chlorine atom only has one electron to gain to give them both, both more stable full electron shell configurations. And that's exactly what happens when a small amount of energy in the form of heat is applied, that the sodium atom transfers its outermost electron to, and it's lost, and it transfers it to the outermost shell of the chlorine atom forming ions in the process. So when you're asked to describe how ions come into being, you want to talk about the transfer of electrons from the metal, usually to the non-metal. So in this case, the sodium atom will lose its outer shell electron, which is transferred via this arrow to the outer shell of the chlorine atom, which has gained that electron, giving them both the end of this process, full outer shells. Note that in a transfer diagram, you do not show that the electron has actually moved and is now over here. Do not put the cross on this uh, diagram because that's part of the next stage, which is the ionic dotting cross diagram. So these sorts of transfer diagrams help to show a description of how ions come into being. It is not, absolutely not, an explanation of what ionic bonding is. That's a separate question. I've tried to, find, tried to explain that one over here. So the question is to define or explain what an ionic bond is. What an ionic bond is, is the strong attraction, the electrostatic force of attraction between the oppositely charged ions as soon as they exist. So as soon as that positive ion is near that negative ion, a strong electrostatic force attraction comes into being and pulls those ions together, forming a new compound as a result. So now I want to try and teach you how to draw a dot and cross diagram to represent ionic compounds. So the first ionic compound I'm going to deal with is sodium chloride or table salt. That involves sodium and chloride ions. But initially, first of all, don't forget, we had sodium and chlorine atoms forming these ions. Now, once the outermost electron from the sodium has been transferred, it has less electrons than it originally had, and the chlorine atom gains more electrons than it already had initially to form the ions. So the sodium lost its outer shell electron, and the chlorine has gained the outer shell electron, meaning the new configuration for the ion of sodium is 2,8, and the new configuration for the ion of chlorine, called chloride, is 2,8,8. Eight. So therefore, the sodium still has its uh, 11 protons in the nucleus, but now it only has 10 electrons around it in its outer shell, uh, in its shells, sorry. So that gives it an overall charge of plus one, a plus charge. The chloride ion has still in its nucleus its 17 positive protons, which it always had, but now it has 18 uh, negative electrons in the shells around it. This means that overall there's an imbalance in charge and it has a negative charge overall. 
How would I represent that in a diagram? Well, I'll draw the now empty outer shell of the sodium because the electron's been removed, put a bracket around it to say that the whole thing has a charge, put that positive charge in the right-hand corner to show that the overall, this sodium ion, has a positive charge. This chloride ion has its seven uh, original electrons in its outer shell, plus the one it's gained from the sodium, shown as a cross. Again, the bracket shows that this is going to have an overall charge and that it has a negative charge because of the imbalance and charge between the protons and the electrons. And that is why the formula of sodium chloride is NaCl, because to form a stable compound, the charges of the ions must cancel each other out perfectly with no remainders. And in this case, that's exactly what happens. Let's look at a second example. So what about magnesium sulfide? Let's first of all think about the original the original atoms that go into making magnesium uh, sulfide. That's a magnesium atom and a sulfur atom. Magnesium has an atomic number of 12 and sulfur has an atomic number of 16. So a magnesium electron configuration is 2H2, two electrons in our shell. Sulfur is 2H6, giving us a 16, six in the outer shell. Describing how those ions go into being formed, the magnesium will transfer two of its electrons, its two outer shell electrons, to the outer shell of the uh, sulfur atom. So magnesium loses its two outer shell electrons, sulfur gains two electrons into its outer shell, giving them both four outer shells. Now, what charges will they gain once this has happened? Well, the magnesium had 282, but it's lost the two outer shell electrons. And sulfur had 286, but it's gained two more, giving it now eight electrons in the outer shell. So magnesium still has 12 protons in its nucleus, as it always had due to its atomic number, but now it only has 10 electrons remaining in its shells. This means overall, the particle now has the atom, which is now an ion, has a charge of 2 plus. The overall charge of the ion has become 2 plus because of the imbalance between the protons and electrons. What about the sulfur? Well, the sulfur always has its 16 positive protons that's still in the nucleus, but now it's gained those two extra electrons. It has 18 negative electrons surrounding it in its shell. This means that overall there is a 2 minus charge for this ion because it has two more electrons than protons giving an overall charge. How do you represent this in a diagram? Well, as before, you now have a magnesium uh, ion with an empty outer shell, bracket around to show that overall uh, this ion has a charge, and that charge is 2 plus because of the Im imbalance between the protons and electrons. Similarly, draw the sulfur with its original six electrons in the outer shell, plus the two it has gained from magnesium, put a bracket around it to show that the overall this particle, this atom, has a charge, and the two minus goes in the right-hand corner to show that is the overall charge of this magnesium uh, this uh, magnesium sulfide or the sulfide ion. That means the formula of magnesium sulfide is MgS because the 2 plus charge of the magnesium is cancelled out by the 2 minus charge of the sulfide. Final example, slightly harder one. How would I go about writing uh, a, a dot and cross diagram for calcium fluoride? First of all, consider the original atoms. That's a calcium atom and a fluorine atom. 20 is the atomic number of ca calcium and 9 is the atomic number of fluorine. So it has 20 protons and therefore 20 electrons. And the electrons are arranged 2, 8, 8, 2 in the outermost shell, 2 electrons. Fluorine has 9 protons and therefore 9 electrons if it's an atom. And those are arranged in 2, 7 in terms of shells. So what could happen here? Well, the calcium is going to lose its two outermost electrons, but Fluorine only has the electron ratio 2, 7, only has the capacity to pick up one more electron till its outermost shell is full. So actually you need two fluorine atoms to pick up the two electrons separately from the calcium atom. So calcium atom transfers one electron to this fluorine and one electron to this fluorine. What does that then for create? Well, the calcium had the electric configuration as an atom, 2, 8, 8, 2. But as the ion, it has lost those two outer shell electrons meaning it still has its 20 protons in its nucleus, but now it only has 18 negative electrons in the shells surrounding that nucleus. This gives it an overall 2 plus charge due to the imbalance between protons and electrons. The two fluorine atoms have both gained an electron, becoming 2,8 as their new electric configuration. It was 2,7, but now it's 2,8 because they've both gained an extra electron here and here. So that means that they still have their nine protons their atomic number is 9, in their nucleus, but each of those fluoride ions now has 10 electrons surrounding uh, the nucleus, giving them an overall charge of minus 1. How do you go about 
converting that into a dot and cross diagram. So the calcium goes in the center, empty shell now because the two electrons have been transferred away, giving an overall charge of two plus. So brackets go around, two plus charge to the right hand side. Both the fluorides are next to it, and you can see that they have their seven outer shell electrons plus the one they've gained from the calcium bracket around that diagram, negative charge in the corner, and this is why calcium fluoride has the formula CAF2, because you have to account for the fact there are two fluoride ions to one calcium ion. Hope this helps you guys understand dot and cross diagrams.